Today I wanted to talk about a little aspect of human hopefulness that aggravates me and something that I hope a lot more business owners, particularly in New York City, start to wake up to so that landlords can stop taking advantage of us. So this is a mistake that I used to make when it comes to evaluating a business's success a long time ago. If I, as my, li my little $10,000 business that I started with $200, if I walked into a $5 million business, I would think to myself, wow. This is a $5 million business. Look at the tools they have that I don't have. Look at all the employees they have that I don't have. Look at the, how sexy the reception area looks. Look at how great this is. This is a $5 million business. And I would think that's more impressive than my $10,000 business. But I would not ask the pertinent question. The pertinent question is, wow, $5 million business. Did they start with 10? Because in my later 20s, I've started to learn that the pertinent thing is not to look at a business and go, wow, that's a $5 million business. Rather, it's to figure out what it is they started with. Because a $5 million business that started with $10 million is not as impressive as a $10,000 business that started with $200. Because the person with a $10,000 business that started with $200 made something out of nothing. Whereas the person with the $5 million business that started with $10 million has actually decreased the worth and the of what what it is that is on the table and that is not impressive even if what they have looks more impressive than what it is we have and the reason this is important in evaluating businesses is because i think a lot of people and this includes me when i was younger would look around and go hmm i'm not sure how they make that work but they're clearly successful I'm going to do exactly what it is they're doing because what they're doing must be successful. So even if I crunch the numbers and I'm not sure which scenario under which I'll be successful, I guess I'll have to have a lot more customers than I think I can actually get. It must work because they're doing it. And this is a type of human hopefulness that leads to terrible business train wrecks, life savings being destroyed, and above all, ridiculously high above market rents all over the place in cities like New York City. What somebody will do is they'll see, hmm, this specific restaurant in this specific area is successful. And then they'll see that there's a space for $30,000 right across the street. And they'll think to themselves, hmm, I'm not really sure how they pay their rent, but they look successful as a restaurant. I'm going to open a restaurant right across the street from that restaurant because it's going to be very successful. It's g if I do everything right, if I satisfy my customers, if I make recipes just as good as what they make, then I should be able to be successful too and they open their restaurant in that $30,000 space, and in one year, they fail. Why did they fail? Because even though they did everything right, even though they provided excellent customer service, hired the right people, and had uh, great recipes, they were not able to compete with the restaurant across the street. Because the restaurant across the street has some 30-year lease that they negotiated during the crack era in Manhattan, where they're paying like three or $4,000 a month, and you're paying $30,000 a month. Rent is going to be set by supply and demand. And if demand ridiculously outpaces supply due to the fact that a lot of people want a space, then the rent is going to continue to go up. And one of the reasons I theorize that rent continues to go up on a lot of these commercial spaces in New York City is because there is an endless supply of people who believe that they are the magical one that is going to make this space work. Even if it doesn't work for the last 15 businesses that renovated the space and tried to make it work and then failed within 6 to 18 months, that they themselves are going to be able to do something that everybody else did not. This is one of the downfalls of human hopefulness, and this is why I say that human hopefulness can cause terrible business train wrecks. If you do not think to yourself as to why other businesses in the area are successful, what are the circumstances under which that they are running? Are those the same circumstances under which you will be running? And above all, are they actually successful? Or are they just a place that took 10 million and turned it into five? Then you are setting yourself up for terrible ruin. And so long as there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who are more than happy to dive off a cliff and pay those twenty to $50,000 a month rents for spaces that they will never make profitable, the prices and these rents will stay where they are. And those landlords, those brokers, those sales agents at, the, at those real estate firms who are telling you that this is a market space, this, is, this place is popping, you're going to do really well here, this is re look at all the foot traffic and blah, blah, blah. Th I know it's expensive, but this is a market rate. They're not telling you about all the other failures that occurred in that space. They're not telling you why everybody else failed, and they're not telling you the truth. But I am. I want you to think about this. Because I'm walking 
to the store, and I see a place that looks a little bit nicer, about eight blocks away, and I'm just, just out of curiosity, I call. It's about the same size of the space I have now. It doesn't have a basement. Shit's $27,000. And I'm just imagining to myself, what if somebody else thought to themselves, well, Lewis has a successful space here. There's a lot of schools around. There's a lot of a customer base, a lot of people that use Apple products. There's a lot of foot traffic. What if I open a space here, and they actually decide to try and open a repair shop in a space that costs $27,000? They're going to fail. They're going to fail because they think that I'm successful under those circumstances if they listen to that jackass real estate broker that says that that's just what everybody pays in the area. That's market right. That it's not that I got this space because I spent six months every single day walking up and down every single street, calling every single uh, building owner or store owner where I'd see that there was something empty in the window to find a good space. No, they just think that I paid market rate because they believe it's a jackass that works at the real estate firm. And if they believe that jackass, if they let their human hopefulness and their desire to follow their dreams, which should be a good thing, get the best of them, and the New York City landlord will win, and they will get their ridiculously above market rate that is unsustainable for yet another year. I want to see this stop happening. I want to see people start to wake up and realize that thirty to $50,000 a month for a box is not sustainable, and if the demand drops, then maybe, just maybe, the prices will drop a little bit, and this bubble will end, and the rent in New York City may just return to being a complete ripoff other than entire utter insanity. Uh, that's my rant for today, and uh, as always, I hope you learned something. Happy New Year, and uh, I wish you the most of success in 2019.